Arbites and Demons. So I have another favorite character from Warhammer 40,000 roleplay, specifically from Dark Heresy. His name is Wolfgang Crack, and he was an Adeptus Arbite. Now, Adeptus Arbite is essentially a space cop, but not like a Green Lantern sort of space cop. Think more like a regular cop just in on another planet. Uh, without going too much into that, they function pretty much like normal cops, maybe with a little, maybe with a little bit more authority than uh, cops do in real world, you know, allowed to execute people on, more like judges from Judge Dredd. They're allowed to execute people on their own discretion, that sort of thing. Um, but for the most part, operate like just normal cops, like you're used to. And Wolfgang used to uh, work for an Inquisitor. His backstory was that he used to work for uh, the Inquisitor that is uh, essentially running the party in this game, the retinue, the runners. And he has been working undercover in the Adeptus Arbites on this planet um, under this Inquisitor's orders and has just recently been tapped. Now, uh, this is because the Inquisitor, who has been uh, also undercover as a... Uh, as a fence in the underworld, um, has caught wind of a arch heretic, a chaos sorcerer who is enacting some large plan, enacting large rituals from around the city and such, and uh, is generally tapping into the underworld and seeping his way into the nobility as well. Well, Wolfgang gets tapped, and something you need to understand about Wolfgang before I continue is that he was a Puritan. And in 40k, what this means is he sees uh, potential danger everywhere. He, wholeheart he wholeheartedly believes in the Inquisition um, saying you are guilty until proven innocent. And that's just because in 40k, in a world so dark and so, so full of hopelessness and just bloodshed, every innocent person is essentially a corruption waiting to happen. He is very wary of the demonic, of the alien, of the mutant. Any, in, any innocent person ha is the potential of being one of those things and is seen as such. Now, how acceptable that is today is a different issue, and it's appropriate to this setting, however. Um, he is a Puritan. He has no leniency, because leniency leads to demonic incursion. And, uh, well, now that you know this, uh, part of his working undercover is that he took a uh, rookie Arbite under his wing and would take him out onto missions. Now, he had to, uh, essentially when he went on missions for his Inquisitor, uh, going out with the other runners, he had to come up with reasons for the, you know, the rookie to come with him. Like, something for, you know, obviously he's training him, but had to come up with some reason why they're going out. Uh, and... One such mission, where the runners go out, they are investigating um, a location where one of the KR Sorcerer's Confederates, one of his lieutenants, was supposedly located. When they get in there, though, they find that it's a trap. The, uh, the two other runners, um, Wolfgang, Wolfgang's rookie, and I believe there was also another Arbite there with them that had befriended Wolfgang, but all five of them get pulled into a trap. Essentially... They get there was a spell, an emblem that was left there, and when they entered into the place, um, they were pulled into a pocket dimension, which housed a demon. And this essentially was this con this uh, chaos sorcerer's personal little murder box. And whenever something got pulled in, this uh, very powerful demon. We're talking like uh, maybe some form of like greater demon. This is not something that we should have been fighting by any means. Uh, we were screwed. And promptly so, it as we start fighting it, and it just starts blowing us away. We're barely staying alive. We're you know we're taking massive hits. We're not sure if we're gonna make make it out of this alive. Well, uh, the pretty much the rookie is holding his own while they're fighting this greater demon. Uh, Wolfgang, he's giving it his all. He's carrying his shotgun. He's throwing grenades at the thing. Um, yeah, I believe he had a shotgun at that point. Yeah, he was shooting, you know, he's shooting his shotgun at him, throwing grenades at the thing, trying to draw its attention. 
and the rookie is doing his best to um, to support Wolfgang and the other people that are caught in this trap. You know, he has a sidearm out, and he's trying to draw a fire, trying to distract it, while one of the times that he shoots gets his attention enough that this greater demon charges the rookie. Now, there's a mechanic in Dark Heresy uh, where if your character dies, you use you burn one of your fate points. Fate points being a Benny, you know, you, you use it to get, like, a reroll or something, but... When you would die in Dark Heresy, you would burn, permanently remove one of your uh, bennies uh, to save yourself. Well, uh, essentially, I asked the GM, can I, burn one of, can I burn one of my fate points to save my rookie? And he allowed it, and what happened was the Wolfgang charges over, leaps, and shoves the rookie out of the way, just as the demon's big old scythe claws come down on either side of him, and just as they're cutting into him, everything goes white. I'm seeing a pattern. Everything goes white, and uh, Wolfgang finds himself alone. Uh, he still has his weapons. He's still all bruised up from the previous battle, um, but he's all alone in a white void, and a simple-dressed man with a air of superiority, and a, a he seems more debonair than he really looks, uh, appears. And he's, I believe he's sh he was shaved bald and he looked young. Um, but he identifies himself as uh, the great manipulator. Now, in for 40K, uh, for fans of 40K that m or Warhammer Fantasy, that might make you think that you know, he, he's being approached by one of the chaos gods, and Zinch, and that's what Wolfgang thinks instantly. You know, he doesn't even think about it. He pulls out his gun, starts firing, does nothing, um, just goes off. It's like he's shooting blanks at him, and it achieves nothing, and the uh, this great manipulator, with a wave of his hand, just gets rid of the weapons, and even though he resists, he ends up, you know, binding him. And finally it comes down to, you know, Wolfgang can't do anything else. He's just bound. He's spitting at him. He's, he's cursing at him, uh, you know, saying that, the, you know, the emperor will eventually come and slay all of his kind. And, and finally he just asks, why am I even here? Um, and the great manipulator explains that he has innumerable schemes throughout the galaxy. Um to change things to how he sees fit. And Wolfgang is integral to one of those schemes. And as such, he is not permitted to die yet. That is why the Great Manipulator saved him. He did not expect the other demon's interference, uh, but he could not allow it to continue. Thus, Wolfgang is going to be returned with his friends to safety and freshly warned of this experience and told that he is not permitted to die until the great manipulator says. And Wolfgang is in shock. He is so overcome with fury and indignation and just speechlessness at this that the next thing he knows he's standing with um he's standing with the other two runners the other the other two uh retinue of the inquisitor operating on this world and uh they're debriefing um telling him that this was just a trap that nobody was there and um they're not sure what happened but they were you know in a bad place with the demon in the pocket dimension and then suddenly they were back and uh uh, the rookie and the other Arbite lived, and they went back to uh, went back to Arbite HQ. And Wolfgang is just standing there, and he's just he's dead inside. He's just what the every what the demon just said to him is just it it it's having such a hard time sinking in. He he's a he's a Puritan, but he's the pawn of a demon. He can't die unless he can't die unless the demon says so. The demon will just save him. For the next few sessions, he's just completely same thing. He's just completely out of it. He, he'll go through the motions. He'll 
Um, when they go on missions, he helps out as what is required of him, but he's just there's he's, there's no passion in it. There's he has no he doesn't know what to do with himself anymore until finally, finally the realization comes to him when he gets I think it was like when he gets shot or he gets stabbed or something. The realization comes to him that no, no, I am no pawn of a demon, especially a great manipulator. He just means to manipulate me. I am in charge of my own fate. I decide when I die. And no demon will determine when I die. I, w uh, I will prove that I am in charge of my own fate. And he goes out, and Wolfgang gets a couple of Elect 2s. Elect 2s are essentially spa you know, space tattoos. They're glowing tattoos. Well, he gets them down on his eyes. He gets the symbol of the Imperium, the double-headed eagle, and he gets one on each eye, just and make sure they did it without anesthetic. Now, I don't think that could really be possible, but it hurt a hell of a lot, and he wanted it to hurt because he wanted to remember. He wanted this to be a reminder that he was in charge of his own fate. And from that point on through, through the next few missions, Wolfgang has become, inc he's become suicidal. Uh, essentially, he will charge headlong into combat without any regard for his safety. Because if he dies, then that proves that he was not a pawn of that demon. He is in charge of his own fate, and he will put himself in the position where he will die. No demon will determine when he dies. And thus he charges into danger without any thought of it anymore, which naturally makes him rash and, and a couple of occasions actually put his fellow runners at risk. But he always did his best to try and save them. He just became reckless. Um, and it comes to the end, end of this adventure where it's finally, they've learned of the, the, uh, the location of this, uh, of this, uh, uh, this arch heretic, this chaos sorcerer who is enacting a ritual in a fortress on the ice plains of the planet. It isn't, doesn't it always work that way? And Wolfgang and the other runners um, gather up all their allies, all the uh, like official forces. The Inquisitor reveals himself as an Inquisitor and gathers up all the forces and they go to storm this, this ice fortress. And they're going in and Wolfgang's at the head of the charge, naturally, because he is going to go headlong into this, into this arch heretic. And he goes in, and they're fighting the chiefest, the, essentially the chief of, of the, chief amongst the arch heretic's, uh, servants. His, his second in command, his wife, uh, who herself is a chaos sorceress. And they get into a fight with her, and cool thing there is, he gets himself so involved, charges like she's blasting away at all the other forces. He charges straight up at her to the point that he just sticks his bolt pistol in her face and fires. Now, she had something worked out where she could escape such a fate, but he fired a bolt round in her face. This is some of the, that's an example of some of the amazing deeds he was actually able to do just by having no regard for his safety whatsoever. But... He de they defeat her, and they go on to this arch heretic, who they awaken, and they learn that his whole plot was that beneath the ice plains long ago, um, essentially an army of demons that, thre that threatened the entire planet were frozen by um, some imperial force. Uh, probably a saint, I, I don't remember, but probably a saint managed to freeze them over underneath it, and he's trying to wake them up. He was in the process of it as... Uh, they do battle with him. And they fight him. He's super strong. You know, he's able to teleport about the room. He's, he actually has, like, super strength. Um, and, you know, he has, you know, his uh, chaos-instilled magic blasts where, you know, it corrupts you just by touching you, let alone damaging you. Um, but, but, at all this, they manage to take him out. I believe it was even a grenade thrown by Wolfgang. Uh, that managed to get that final uh, kit, that final attack in that actually killed him. So, the day's won. We've killed the arch heretic. You know, his forces are gone. His uh, wife has escaped, but we can deal with her another time. The real threat is gone. Everybody's gathering up, and you know they're they're starting to patch their wounds. And then a frantic call comes from the the front gate, 
and the Inquisitor, you know, gathers his runners, and they all go, and they meet with the person who made the call uh, on the the palisade, you know, on the walls outside the gate. And they go, and they meet there, and out on the plains, uh, there's a lot of pot marks and stuff. Essentially, from going from horizon to horizon, all of those demons that he was trying to awaken did. He did just enough to allow them to awaken themselves. And guess what? They're hungry, and they're mad, and they're excited. And this wall of demon swarm is just rushing towards the location of the source of power that was trying to awaken them in the first place. And just so, just swarming in on them. And quick, everybody's like scrambling, trying to figure out what to do, you know, trying to make plans on how they can get out of there or how they can call for... Uh, uh, reinforcements or how they can fortify the place and as they're all scrambling about Wolfgang slips away and nobody even really notices at first but he very he very calmly just walks down to uh, to some of the other troops and reloads his his grenades and grabs new clips for his bolt gun and grabs a new stun baton and they don't really even notice that he's gone until they see a lone figure walking out onto the ice out in front of the fortress. Wolfgang walks very calmly by himself towards the oncoming swarm. He has, as he does so, he you know loads his gun, checks it to make sure that it's functioning, checks his stun baton, and the horde gets closer and closer, and it comes to a point where it where they're only uh, maybe ten feet away. And he j he just raises his he just raises his bolt pistol, and he fires just as they overtake him. And that is the closing image of the campaign and the fate of Wolfgang Crack. Wolfgang was an awesome character, and I love the way that he ended up turning out. Uh, in the same way that the previous story I told, I love the way that Roland turned out because it demonstrates um, how Warhammer 40K works in the best way. Everybody comes away tainted. Everybody, come the forces of chaos know exactly what they need to twist you, to turn your best intentions against you. And it was just awesome. It's pretty much guaranteed that Wolfgang died. But I did clarify that if he ever did uh, survive, he would pursue the route of becoming Inquisitor. And that, that suicidal streak would go to the point where he would frag an entire world that he was on just to prove that that, manipu that grand manipulator was wrong. Just perfect. <laughs>